This is the Samsung Galaxy A56 5G disassembly. If you're interested in seeing more videos like this, make sure you subscribe and click on the notification bell so you'll be notified once I upload a new video. Also, if you need any tools, there are links in the description. First, we'll start off by removing the SIM tray. Looking at the SIM tray, we can see a rubber gasket around the opening. Now heat needs to be applied to the back plate using either a hair dryer or a heat gun to loosen up the adhesive underneath and then a pry tool can be used to pry the back plate off. I prefer to use a hair dryer since there's less of a chance of damaging any of the components inside by overheating them. Here's a better look at the glass backplate. The glass camera lens covers can be replaced by applying heat and gently prying them off. So you don't need to take apart the phone to replace those. At this point, there are 16 Phillips screws which need to be removed. Looking at the top plastic cover, we see an antenna line drawn which is a light gray color line, the NFC antenna, as well as graphite film to help transfer heat. We can see the earpiece speaker located on the other side, as well as the graphite film extending underneath. Here's a look at the bottom speaker assembly. We can see that they incorporated the vibrator motor into the speaker assembly housing. At this point, the battery cable can be disconnected, followed by the rest of the cables. Also to note, this flex cable connects the main board to the subboard, as well as to the screen cable. And this flex cable also connects the subboard to the main board. This flex cable replaces the coaxial cable, which is that thinner wire looking cable which runs on the side on older models. Generally, the coaxial cables are used to connect antenna contacts. So if you needed to replace the screen, you'd remove the back plate, the screws on the bottom speaker assembly and the speaker assembly itself. You would then disconnect the flex cable which connects the screen cable to the main board. And then you'd peel off the flex cable from the screen off the frame. At which point you could heat up the front of the phone where the screen is to loosen up the adhesive underneath. Pry the old screen off, apply new adhesive and reapply the new screen making sure you run the flex cable back to the opening in the mid frame and reassemble the phone. There's a single Phillips screw holding down the main board. So looking at the main board, we see the 12 megapixel ultra wide lens, the 50 megapixel primary, as well as a 5 megapixel macro lens. The main camera is the only one with OIS or optical image stabilization. The camera connectors can be disconnected by just popping them off. The LED flash is located here, and there's a secondary microphone on the top corner. The ambient light sensor is located on the other side, and we have a better look at the 12 megapixel front facing camera. The other two camera connectors are also located on the other side. There's a graphite pad on the back shield to help transfer heat. Once the graphite pad has been peeled back, we see thermal pads on top of these chips, as well as the processor. Here's a better look with the thermal pad removed. To remove the battery, there is a pull pouch provided to help you pry it off. There are arrows labeled guiding you to pull off each tab. This is the 5000 mAh battery.
Once the battery has been removed and the pull pouch has been peeled off, we get a better look at the copper vapor chamber which runs underneath the battery as well as the motherboard. There are two Phillips screws holding down the subboard. Looking at the subboard or charger port board, we see the primary microphone located here and the rubber gasket around the charger port. The SIM reader is located on the other side. The fingerprint reader is located here, which is held down with some adhesive. To replace that, just apply some heat and gently pry it off. And this is the flex cable for the volume keys and power button. To replace that, just gently peel off the flex cable and pull out this metal bracket inside of the slit of the frame and gently pull out the flex cable. As for the buttons, those can be pulled out of the frame. There is also a rubber gasket and mesh filter over the speaker opening on the frame, as well as the microphone holes. Now when it comes to this phone, if you were to accidentally insert a SIM ejector tool in the wrong hole, you don't need to worry since both the filters and the microphones are seated above the holes, so they wouldn't get damaged. For the repairability score on this phone, I give it a 9 out of 10. Now it's time to put the phone back together. Once everything's back in place, apply new adhesive and reapply the back cover. Flip over the phone, power it on, and you're done. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one.